Hello and welcome to Arts Alive Theatre, the show that shines a large follow spotlight onto all of Liverpool's theatrical performances. This week we'll be taking our cow along to the Epstein Theatre and exchanging it for some magic beans so that we can look at their production of Jack and the Beanstalk. But first, we're rubbing our lamp with glee and gusto to take a magical carpet ride to the Far East, aka the Liverpool Empire Theatre, to look at their production of Aladdin. After last year's swashbuckling performance as Peter Pan, Ray Quinn stars in the title role of Aladdin, and joining him is actress and singer Claire Sweeney as the genie of the ring, as well as Radio City's breakfast show host, Leanne Campbell, who is playing Princess Jasmine. City Talk's motormouth Pete Price is the emperor, and Roy Brandon is the hilarious Widow Twanky. Our team went behind the scenes to find out more. Wash your clothes like I do mine. Different colors, different time. Yummy reason, yummy rhyme. Bring them up, take all the time. Take up every time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back again, but this year it's Aladdin, and we brought the same star back because he is a star star. We are here, and you won Dancing on Ice, Ray Quinn. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm fine, I'm fine. Very excited to be back in Liverpool again. Loving that they've asked me back a second time. On here, love, really, isn't it? It is indeed, and uh, very athletic part you're playing. It is, it is, and I mean, I, I keep dancing around and singing. I mean, it's good. And when I say it's an all singing, all dancing, spectacular show, I'm not messing. But the sad thing is, we haven't got his EP in it. Have no, we? I haven't got my uh, my single. But I mean, th they weren't happy with the arrangements, but. Mm. We have got some fantastic songs. And again, a great cast. We've had a laugh, haven't we, so far, my yesterdays? Well, I play the emperor, and you try to marry my daughter. I do, yeah, Leanne. <laughs> I, I don't like the way you come on to her, I've got to be honest. Well, I just... Aladdin's a bit pushy, isn't he? You know, what can you do? He's, he's the cheeky chappy of the, the city, or the village, should I say. How do you feel about the uh, Dancing on Ice? Because it was sensational, wasn't it? Oh, I loved it, yeah. It was a good little gig for me. Um, you know, it was one of those things that I learned it and I wanted to go back and prove myself again. Um, and I wanted to win, so, you know, I don't do things by halves. I'm all or nothing, so. Ray Quinn, why should people come and see you at uh, the Empire in Aladdin? Because we're better than the Epstein. <laughs> We'll do that again. No. Ray Quinn, yes. why should people come and see you in Aladdin at the Empire? They should come and see us because it's going to be an absolutely fantastic show. We're already laughing and we haven't even started on the stage yet. We've got a fantastic cast and a great story and um, a lot of glitz, glamour, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm back. Indeed you are. And uh, that's it. Really. The star, Ray Quinn. Just give us two minutes with you. All right, two minutes. I've got to make a quick call anyway. I'll be over there. Right. Jasmine, I'm so sorry about that. I just so much I want to say to you. Can you hear me? Yes. Something very important I want to tell you. Go on. Have Everton announced their starting lineup yet? What? <coughs> sorry, I'm a bit nervous. I feel like that new bloke from Sheffield United. Oh, you are the Do you have feelings for me? Yes, I think I do. Love. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't a surprise. This is the biggest treat ever to have Claire Sweeney in her own town at the Empire and our first panto together to me is the greatest experience. We've had a few dodgy nights out together, haven't we? We have indeed. The first panto. Welcome back to Liverpool. Oh, thank you. With the baby. I'm so thrilled to be working with Peter. It's been amazing. Oh, you and can the baby. babysit, can't you? I can sit. Well, <laughs> well, I've got lots of spaces, so I can babysit. You can, yeah. And of course, last time we uh, were in costume, you were carrying the baby and now Jackson's with us. But the funny thing is, um, the costume fitted me better when I was pregnant. <laughs> Since I've had the baby, it's literally too small for me because I've got so fat. It's amazing to have you at the Empire. You've starred in so many West End musicals. I did my very first panto at the Empire, Peter, when I was 17 years of age. And I've never been back since doing panto, so... 
I've got to ask, because I've seen every one of you West End shows, to work with Patrick Swayze. Wouldn't it be great if you had brought him? He's still been alive and brought him to Liverpool. Wouldn't that have been amazing? He'd have loved it. I mean, he was a very earthy guy, a really gorgeous guy, and I think he'd have loved Liverpool. Your part's very funny. Are you pleased with it? I think so. Do you think it's funny? Oh, very, very funny. I think funny. you're funny in it yeah, as well. I think I you're really funny. They know I'm funny. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, no, um, I thought, I mean, to be honest, because I've just had the baby, they said, do you want to play the genie? And I thought, I mean, quite unusual for me, but I thought, oh, great, I'll rub a lamp and get off, and I'll be able to be in the <laughs> dressing room with the baby. But no, I'm on throughout. I've got loads to do in it, um, which was a bit of a shock, but I'm quite thrilled now because it's a nice part. A big question everyone's asked me to ask. Are we going to have a Lion King moment? Is Jackson going to appear on stage in the hands? That's what you want, isn't it? Oh, more than and anything. And he, he wants to walk on with the baby, don't you? You want to walk on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Baby, the genie. yeah. Are you excited about working the Empire? I'm going to let you carry him on Thank one you. day. You're gonna, are you excited about doing the Empire? Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm home for I mean, I've just had my baby. I'm home for Christmas. I'm surrounded by all my friends. And as you know, I'm... The baby's in work with me every day. I'm breastfeeding in between scenes. I couldn't turn up and do that anywhere else. But I'm surrounded by friends and family here, so. Also, exciting news, you're back with your own play and musical next year. I am, Sex and Suburbia. We're coming back to the Empire. That's oh, going to be great. Thank That's you. That's going to be great. Thank you. Well, I really hope you enjoy Christmas. Aww. And Jackson's first Christmas in with us and in Liverpool. I know. I'm Don't have to stop me crying. I'm still hormonal. Claire Sweeney. <laughs> It's fairly slow, early doors, then picked up the pace a bit. Oh, that's good. Oh, Jasmine, you're charming, you're beautiful, you are. Very impressive up front. Oh, thank you. Oh, when I see you, and when I look at those big, beautiful eyes, when you... Dribble down the right-hand side. Oh, Aladdin, and when I first saw you, I felt... Sick as a parrot. This is an interesting lady, another one of our stars at Taladin the Empire. She is the breakfast host on uh, Radio City's big, big new breakfast show. She plays my daughter. Last time we worked together in pantomime, she was there, then there, and there. She was a little girl. We've done so many pantos together. Do you know what? The first pantomime I ever did was Aladdin at the Empire. And you're right, I was nine. And you were in that? I was indeed. And here and we are again, a million years later. Who'd have thought that you, as a little girl of nine, would be back, one of the stars at the, the Empire, playing princess? It is. It's lovely because we get to see all the little ones, don't we? And they come in and they learn the routines. And, you know, it's a massive thing when you're tiny. And you do think, one day will I get to be the princess and wear the lovely costumes and... And yeah, it's happened. I'm, I'm the princess, believe it or not. Now, you've put your own little style to it, haven't you? So um, she does slip into a Scouse accent every now and again. She's a little bit naughty. She's not your traditional Disney-style Jasmine, um, but she's, she's fabulous. <laughs> she and, is fab. And publicly, it's time to find out. I'm playing the Emperor, your dad. What do you actually think about your father? <laughs> The, the real P Price or the, the no, Emperor? No, 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 the Emperor. Get into oh, character. Oh, the Emperor. Too. The Emperor is a wonderful man. He's uh, very rich. He's very protective over his daughter. That's a lie. He's trying to marry me off to anyone and everyone who will have me. Because you're costing me a fortune. Yeah, that's true. Why should everybody come and see the Panto at the Empire this year in Aladdin? I can I can speak as a mum now, Peter. I mean, I've done this since I was nine, ten, as I say, and I've always been a big fan of Pantos. And once you become a mum, and you get to see your kids watch a pantomime, you finally understand what it's all about. I can remember coming with my nana when I was five or six, and my little boy's been coming since he was one to watch me, and I got to take him to one last year late on. And when you see the little ones, the whole the whole body language from every child in that theatre, you tend to watch the kids more than you watch the show when you come and watch Panto. And the little ones just love it. They believe every minute of it. It's quite, it's a lovely moment for the actors when you come out the stage door at the end and you come out and you're just being yourself and you'll catch the eye of a little one and they're almost disappointed that you're not speaking in the same voice that you were talking. So you slip back into character so it's not to spoil it for the kids. And when, you know, they don't know me as Leanne from Radio City, you are Jasmine to the tiny ones and that's so magical to think that they, you know, they're, they're sucked into the whole thing. It's lovely. And the most important thing about that as well, there are new customers because Panto is the first in introduction to theatre. They stay as our customers. Yeah, it's true. But my tiny one's one. My Annabelle's one and I'm going to test her out. So people always say to me, you know, my little one's only three and, you know, they're too young. 
I don't think they are. It depends on your little one. You know your little one. As I say, Joseph was one and he loved the panto. He did do a lot of running up and down the aisle. But we don't mind that, do we? We like to watch the kids having fun. But yeah, I'm going to test my little one year old one year old out this So year. you're playing princess in yeah. Aladdin at the Empire. Now, I've just had a brilliant idea. Oh, go on. Because there's nobody here to interview me. So if I pass you the mic, you can ask me some questions Why about not? panto. I don't know. Should we? It's behind you. Okay. Right there, Mr. Price. Okay. Pete, can you name? I'm going to do questions for you, like fire questions off. Okay. The best character you've ever played? The best character I've ever played, Widow Twanky. The best person you've ever worked with? Oh, that's a difficult one. Stella Black. And? Uh, Pam Ranson. And? You. <laughs> Pete Price, Liverpool Empire, Aladdin. Don't miss him. That was Aladdin, which is playing at the Liverpool Empire Theatre from the 13th of December to the 4th of January. After the break, we have more panto as we go over to the Epstein Theatre to see their production of Jack and the Beanstalk. See you then. Welcome back to Arts Alive Theatre. Working on the adage that you can never have enough of a good thing, this year sees two productions of Jack and the Beanstalk. Not only uh, do we have a production at St Helens Theatre Royal, which we previewed two weeks ago, but this year we also have a production from the Epstein Theatre. Our team went to find out more. He's basically he's uh, he's obviously like a confident guy and like he thinks he's all good looking and stuff and uh, but he's also got like a very cowardly side to him like uh, when they approach him about like slaying the, the killing the giant and stuff like that, he's also like a bit like oh I can't do it so he's not he's not he's like, he's got very he's got two different sides to him he's got a very confident side but then he's also got the sort of cowardly side to him but yeah he's interesting he's he's actually a pretty good character like he's uh, obviously. He's in love with a princess, and has been for a long time, so he's, his main aim is to get a princess. My name is Alison Crawford, and I am playing Princess Jill. So, uh, Princess Jill, of course, she's the daughter of the king, and um, they're not like your normal royal family. They are, I don't have very much money. They don't have two pennies to rub together. Who knows where the money's gone, uh, apart from the fact that maybe the giant is demanding taxes left, right and centre. So um, the village people themselves, they don't have very much money either. So um, she's not sort of covered in bling and walking down with tiaras and things. She's, she's quite a grounded princess. However, she's, you know, she's a little bit feisty as well, you know. Um, her father's quite small, as, she, as is she. So um, the pair of them, they, they do that thing, don't they, when uh, you just want to be noticed, excuse me. So um, they've got a bit of a bite, they've got a bit of an edge to them. Jack Trot plans to return to Merrydale and do something very special. <laughs> you should have called him Bogey because he gets right up my nose. Hi, my name's Suzanne Collins and I'm playing Flesh Creep, who is the big bad giant's right hand woman. So she's like the baddie, she's um, the giant's right hand woman. So she's just mean, she's really cruel, she hates children, she hates anything good, anything nice. Um, and she's just always plotting and scheming and. I get to sword fight with uh, the lovely Dan Osborne. I get to um, I get to sing. I'm coming up. Um, I get this party started. Sorry, like the Shirley Bassey version. 
and there's all these fantastic male dancers around me and I'm thinking it's all uh, it's all great, it's all great fun. She's always arguing with the fairy, obviously they're the rivals, which is a lovely Thelma, Thelma Nadine, she's the good fairy and I'm always rivaling with her, we're always having like little arguments and stuff and then um, she's she's always slating me and I come on and slate her and I go, oh, take no notice of that fairy, that fairy's off her head, always making wishes come true, well, I wish she was dead. Oh, boy. You are, but you'll soon understand. I can have your house crushed and take the sweeties from your hand. Hey. Scary is that? <laughs> That's Blunderball, the giant. And he's doing my head in. My name's Thelma Nadine, and I'm playing Fairy Moonbeam in Jack and the Beanstalk. I said hello, boys and girls. Hello. hello. Fairy Moonbeam is the good fairy in this, so. Hopefully all the children are going to like me and not boo or anything because I couldn't live with that, they started booing me. So it's where she helps Jack um, rescue the princess and obviously help towards a happy ending, which all pantomimes are. Okay guys, have you got everybody back yet? Yeah. Yeah. I came to watch pantomimes and I didn't realise there was that much work involved in them because it usually looks like a farce and everyone sort of you know, makes mistakes or say the wrong words and I thought that was, you know, that looked quite easy but when you're actually doing it, it's so, you know, the directions are so strict and you've got to be the, at a certain place in a certain time and it really is hard, it's really hard work, it's not as easy as what they make it look to the people and I just thought when they asked me to do it, I just kept thinking Christmas, I thought yes no, you know, it's so I was like, closer, 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 closer it gets, I'm just like, I'm gonna be sick thinking about this, just thinking about this pantomime. I think it's only me and Dan um, who aren't actors. And when we seen them the first day, we were just looking at each other going, oh my God. And then they told us we had to sing. We had to go for singing lessons. We had to go and record in a studio. I felt like Bono with the things on, like this, singing. So that was um, an experience in itself, something else off my bucket list, isn't it? So maybe X Factor next year. My name is Fairy Moonbeam and I'm here to tell the tale of a boy called Jack, Princess Jill and the Kingdom of Merry Dale. I got the script the day before I got to Liverpool, which was only a few days ago, so um, really I, I don't know, I just, I, we all read through it together as, as the whole cast, we all read through it and, uh, and straight away I love the script, it's, like, it's, it's really funny and I've never even been to see a panel before so I, I didn't know what to expect at all, but uh, it's actually really funny, it's really cool. Um, the more I do it, the, the better it's getting, so it's like, it, I suppose it's the same with everyone, so it's, it's quite, it's quite nerve-wracking to be honest, because these are all like actors and actresses and they're actually really, like, they're amazing, like, they're, they're like, so they, they're just doing it straight away. So where obviously I'm, I, I was an actor, but it's, it, it's different, I'm used to working on TV and then this is on stage, so you just got to, it's like remembering this whole script, it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's quite hard, but I've almost got it, I've only been here for two, three days and I, I've almost remembered the whole script, so it's all right. How did I prepare for this role? Well, I played um, princesses like Cinderella and Princess Jasmine and Snow White qu quite a few times in pantomimes for, for a long time. So it's not new to me. Um, I'm, I'm very aware of the type of character that uh, the, the princess needs. So um, I'm already prepared in the experience that, that I've already played roles like this. However, I do have very similar characteristics. Um, you know, when you first meet people and you're smiley and, and you articulate, you speak properly and you have your phone voice on all the time. So I'm a bit like that um, anyway. So um, that's how I've prepared my, my character, but as well, just sort of getting to know the script really helps. And then that horrible giant blunderball starts roaring and makes us all miserable. Okay, so Michael Chapman and I'm um, I'm the Dame Dame Trot in Jack and the Beanstalk, and I'm directing it and uh, yeah, I've written it as well this year. Yeah. <laughs> She's a uh, Jack Trot's mum. Um, she's a little bit naughty. 
I'm used to doing reality TV where you're just being like sort of playing you're playing yourself, you're just talking the way you usually would and everything. And then in this, it's like it's all over the top. It's acting like and then you, you like you can embarrass yourself, like it doesn't matter about embarrassing yourself because you're playing another character. It's just so it's it is really good fun. I'm I'm actually enjoying it. <laughs> I've danced in pantomime since I was like two, since I was a little girl, and then after Book Sides, I've been Snow White, I've been Peter Pan, I've been Cinderella, I've been a Slave of the Ring and Aladdin, all goody parts, um, like with the magic, and I just love it, because my mummy as well, and I love like the children, I love that hearing the voices going, oh, and seeing the magic, you know, and this time I'm bad here, I've got to make them cry, and I'm looking forward to it now, I am looking forward to it, at first I was going, oh, that might be mean, but, um, yeah, I'm really getting my teeth into That was Jack and the Beanstalk, and it'll be playing at the Epstein Theatre until the 4th of January. Well, that's all we have time for this week, but join us next week as we'll be previewing what's on in Liverpool's theatres in 2015. That leads me to wish you all a very happy new year. Until next time, goodbye and break a leg. <laughs> <laughs>